Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Weeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile art dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hello and welcome to our lovely guest today, Amy James. Hi, Amy. Hi, Sue. You're right. Good, thank you. Yeah, good. Right. Amy is a textile artist from South Derbyshire. And as she says, her art quilts are not set in one theme. In fact, she's covered animals, landscapes and flowers, historic artifacts and outside art. Textile arts gives her a way to express herself and experiment. And it really is a constant learning curve. She works in her sewing studio, which is spacious, light and calm in her hometown in Derbyshire. She uses various techniques in all of her pieces, including quilting, machine stitching and embroidering, hand embroidery, mixed media and weaving. She also likes to use batiks, hand dyed and vintage fabrics and threads. Now, before we get started with your stitchery story today, would you like to share with us what you are working on at the moment and what has got you excited? Right, well, it's um, quite unusual for me. I've got nothing started at the moment. That's just because I've been working on exhibitions that have either took place recently or taking place mm-hmm. um, in the next few weeks. So everything's kind of finished for the deadlines. That's um, a nice feeling though, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Plus, yeah, I've, I went on holiday a couple of weeks ago and I thought I've got to get everything finished by then because... If I was away and I'd got something that wasn't finished, mm. it'd drive me insane. Yes, yes. So I've managed to get everything finished. Um, I am researching a new topic of folklore at the minute. So nice. I'm just t- taking the time over the next few weeks. I bought myself this huge book to go through. <laughs> um, so it's just researching things at the moment rather than, you know, stitching yeah. anything as such. And that's that's going to be an exciting topic, isn't it? There's lots of scope there for, wow, loads yes. of things. I can, I can see lots of brightly coloured, nice images coming out of that. Yes, yeah, that's it. That's the subject that you could just keep going on and mm. on and on, um, which, is, which is great. And, where, and is that for any particular exhibition or a, a group or anything like that or just something you fancied doing next? Just something I fancied doing. I actually, um, I was racking my brains of what to do and I actually turned around to my mum one day and said, I, I don't know what to do. And she says, what about folklore? And I was like, mm-hmm. well, why aren't I thought of that? <laughs> Mums are quite good at ideas sometimes, aren't they? <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. Brilliant. And um, you said you'd been preparing for some various exhibitions. Are, are, they, are they finished now? I've still got Melbourne Festival, which is coming up this weekend. Right. Um, I'm over at Bank Mill Studio in November in Derby, but that that's it then for this year. Right. Um, okay. I've got nothing again till till uh, next year. Right. Okay then. Now, um, we were chatting before. One of the things that I uh, really liked was a recent. Uh, there's an article that's on textileartist.org about how textiles has changed your life. So that yes. kind of leads in quite nicely to how did you first get interested in embroidery and textile art, possibly you know, who taught you or what did you do? How, how and why did you get in, into it in a bit more detail? Okay, right. Well, I actually have bipolar that was diagnosed in 2009. Right. And I was quite poorly. Mm. Um, and me and my mum used to meet up every week in Costa Coffee and I'd have a coffee. Yeah. And we said one day it'd be good for us to do like a part time course at an adult learning centre well, uh, just yeah. to get us out of the house. Yeah. yeah. We actually originally went for floristry. Right. But they were booked up on that course. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up on uh, the sewing course. Well, I've not done sewing since I, f- I finished school. I think yeah. I only used a sewing machine for about 10 minutes. So we went along to this sewing course. I'd never been interested in dressmaking. Um, so I tried a bit of patchwork, made yeah. myself a patchwork bag. All right. And that's basically how I got into it. Me and mum used to go along every Tuesday afternoon and, you know, um, learn how to do patchwork. And then it just followed on from there, really. Once I'd finished there, it was YouTube looking for quilting ideas. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got into it, really. I mean, I started off doing traditional quilt. Yes. 
And then it was probably about six years ago and I'd gone to the quilting festival and it suddenly dawned on me that quilts don't have to be patchwork. Um, there's, there's some amazing, you know, when I, when I first went to a quilting exhibition, it's like, wow, in fact, really, why are these called quilts? Because these are just works yes. of art. They're fantastic. Yeah, you, you do have that idea of patchwork squares, don't you, and things. It's like, oh, fantastic. Yeah, it kind of opened a door for me, yeah. really. Um, and then I actually decided, hand embroidery, I'd never done any before, I decided to do a city and guilds in hand embroidery. Right, so it came out of nowhere. Yeah, especially if you've I never loved. tried before as well. Oh. That's that's quite unusual, isn't it? Oh yeah, I absolutely loved it. And then I did a machine embroidery sitting guilds as well. And at the moment, I'm doing a level three sitting guilds in design and stitch. Wow, uh, with Sean Martin, and it's it's kind of using those different courses to get the techniques to put them together. Right, that I use in the art quilts. So, yes. Um, and and it is a lot of techniques, isn't it? You know, when you look at some some of the some of the ones I've seen, it's like, wow, how many techniques are actually on the go here to have created yes. this 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 piece of work? Yeah. So it's um, for me. I do do traditional quilts every now and then. I try to do one a year, right? Just to uh, use up a bit of fabric. Keep <laughs> uh, <laughs> your hand in. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Um, but yeah, mainly it's art quilts because I haven't got the patience now for patchwork. <laughs> <laughs> and that was interesting about just kind of out of nowhere, really, starting with embroidery, because in all fairness, a lot of the, the guests I speak to have kind of given it a dabble when they were younger. Some have started later on, but I think to kind of be, be where you are and, and the work that you're doing when you hadn't done any embroidery beforehand I think it really speaks a lot to your determination to have a go and you found something that you actually that you actually love doing and didn't realize yeah. all those years that actually you were going to be good at it yeah absolutely I mean if you just told me 10 years ago I'd have touched a sewing machine I'd have laughed at you <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's all happened quite quickly yeah um, but I I still even now I still love doing the courses to still learn new techniques Um, Mm. because I'm a big believer in you can never know everything. So it is constantly a learning curve. So it's important for me to keep learning. Yeah, and that applies in anything. The way I actually earn money is through providing online marketing, consultancy and services and podcast services to, to, to other business owners. And that's an area where you have to learn constantly because everything's changing so fast yes um, and there's, there's not a week goes by when I've learned something new or relearned something or investigated something or done another course yes you know because I, I have to keep my skills current because I'm also a, a mentor as well uh, in an online learning community so you, know, you can't be a mentor if you've got rusty skills so well, it, that's it it's, yeah. it's, you know which whichever area that you're focusing on continuous learning is is essential these days so it's yes it's yeah. nice to hear that you still like to do the different classes and so on so yes definitely brilliant and so you've done various classes and also good old youtube there are some excellent things on youtube isn't there Liz? There is. <laughs> yeah. so as you were thinking of you know when you'd started your path of doing these afternoon classes and so on has there been any other major inspirations to you over the over the years with regards to your art or anything else in particular and and you know and currently as well what kind of keeps you inspired right okay I mean my tutor is an absolute inspiration um, she's uh she's one of those people that she kind of if you're feeling like you're struggling she'll push you mm. in the right direction yes uh, I mean I'm very lucky to have her as my tutor so yeah she's a great inspiration for me because I look how far she's come and what she does I think yeah I can, I, I'm with the right tutor I can do that right um, my my <clears throat> probably met the, my biggest inspiration in the quilting world is a lady called Susan Carlson she's over in America right and it was actually one of her quilts that I saw that very first time at the quilting festival what just it just blew me away of of the talent Mm. um that she is she's got this fantastic way of bringing 
fabrics together that you wouldn't normally use right. uh, to create these huge fabric collages I'd love to go on one of her workshops but she's right over in America so I don't think I'll quite get there but I mean I can look at any type of art and be inspired yeah you know it could be something like pottery to photographs um, paintings any kind of art you know kind of appreciate what what kind of work goes into it so I've you know I have quite a lot of inspiration from uh, different kind of media and I think that is one thing with the art quilts isn't it to say that we've said already there's so many different things going on and um, even looking at some of the current photos that you know that I've seen online there's there's, there's flowers and nature and flowers are always an excellent source of of inspiration and the world around us the world on our doorstep our garden those kind of areas I I I always like to have a look at as well so yes yeah The other thing that I just thought was, I would have said, your mum must be an inspiration to you as well, because it was her brilliant idea to go and start a class in the first place. (laughs) Well, yes, before that class, she'd never, ever done any sewing. Yeah. Absolutely hated it. (laughs) Now, I can tell you, she makes cock quilts like you wouldn't believe. She's patchwork bags and she's kind of learned with me so it's been really nice that's lovely uh, to be able to do it with somebody so yes excellent and going back to that article that we mentioned from textile artist saying how textiles can change your life then as you said 10 years ago you'd have laughed at somebody saying that you were you know using a sewing machine or that you'd even have given embroidery a go yes that that really is a wonderful story and we'll put the link in there as well that people can go and read that article as well thank you and time yes thank you so we've mentioned about there's a lot of different techniques involved so is there any particular techniques that you can highlight as your favorites that you kind of like doing the best and, and kind of why why do you like those techniques so much Amy? My favorite techniques really I've got a couple um hand dyeing fabrics one which was quite a shock to me before because ah. before I started any my sitting guilds that frightened me the most right if I couldn't find a fabric that I wanted to use I'd just change my mind and use something else <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but now um, I dye quite a lot of fabrics and print a lot of fabrics and it is very addictive so gone are the days where I can resort to plan b I actually dye my own now and print my own which is great yeah you, you, it's 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 not something that I've I've had a little go at it um yes to do kind of random background kind of fabrics you know to kind of doing it in a yeah. bag and all that kind of thing and and I keep I keep thinking that you know when it's a knitting and stitching show I go and, oh yes I'll get this dye kit I've got about two or three on the go now I think come on stop buying dye kits and go and actually <laughs> get the rubber gloves out and go and actually do something with them right that's that's been a reminder to me Amy to um to, to go and the things that I bought last year that I haven't used yet to get them out of the damn bag and go and do something with them I think it's one of those things as well because you never with me I'm quite haphazard with how I work so I never know actually how it's going to turn out until yeah. I get it out of the bag and it's dry <laughs> so it's, it's uh, yeah it's quite exciting it's like waiting for Christmas yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but my other favorite is thread painting right with a machine because yeah. it's quick yeah and it's one of them techniques where you can have a blank piece of fabric and then you can c- create whatever you want mm. um it's like drawing just with your same machine but actually it's funny enough i can't draw using pencil to paper i can only draw using the same machine so yeah that's that's probably one of the reasons why i like it so much because i can prove people wrong that i can draw yeah. uh, just not with a pencil right <laughs> D- different medium isn't it so Yes, yes. We've just kind of briefly touched that you relatively new to the kind of textile world, but yes, building your business up from a, a kind of a start of nothing, which I, I think is really, really great. But what would you say has been the high point so far of your textile art and kind of art quilts and embroidery journey so far, Amy? That would be this year, basically. This year has been the highlight, um, really, because I only really started to exhibit this year when I gained a little bit of confidence and I thought it's now or never. I Mm -hmm. need to, you know, get myself out there. So I've only started exhibiting 
so far I've done a few exhibitions at uh, Bulpa I took part in Derbyshire Open Arts and I'm at Melbourne Art Festival this weekend probably about April time as well I joined the textile art group Midlands Textile Forum right um, so I became a fully exhibiting member and I've just done my first exhibition with the, those um, ladies in August um, this year um, and that's brilliant for me because I haven't had that experience in the textile art world. It's mm. basically been me behind my sewing machine and that's it. Yes. Um, so to be able to get to speak to ladies that have been doing it a lot longer than I have, mm-hmm. that have got that experience of exhibitions because I, I was just going out, you know, kind of hoping for the best not yeah. quite know what I was getting myself into <laughs> so they've been great with the advice and the tips and so that's really helped me a couple of weeks ago I became the area representative for the Quilters Guild for Derbyshire right so uh, that's going to be quite fun I'm going to be in the post for three years and then I'd been running workshops myself at the sewing studio but yeah. this year has really increased in people wanting to come and learn uh, which is I love that part because seeing other people want to be creative and if I can show them something new to try then that's fantastic it's also going back to that skills development thing as well, isn't yes. it? That you're helping others develop their skills, but you're also developing your skills by yes. explaining and inspiring and you know getting people organised and doing the work so they can actually put their ideas or help them develop their ideas and, and actually creating the work at the end of it. It is very satisfying helping and running workshops and so on. That has been, yes, a very busy year then hasn't it it has and it's not ended yet so yes. i know we've still got three 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 and a half months left haven't we so, yeah fantastic in terms of developing your confidence and that was something that you you mentioned to me when we were emailing and some so to kind of organize this chat was yeah it's been a big thing for you in getting yourself out there a, a big step and yes it's taken confidence and courage I think it takes yes. courage for all of us to step out of our comfort zone and actually go for it is there any particular trigger that's made you think right I am going to go for it I feel a bit scared but I am going to put myself out there because it's something when I've spoken to other artists and even when I'm speaking to people say, oh, would you like to come and have a chat with me on my podcast? Oh, I don't like speaking about myself. Oh, no, I'll be a bit scared. Well, you're, yeah. on, you're in business. So I, it yeah. kind of, I can understand it, but perhaps there's some pointers or inspiration that you can share with people who are listening who are maybe in the same space that you were a few months a year ago thinking yeah I'd really like to do this but I am too scared anything that you can kind of help us out with Amy in that Uh, okay well I mean it was timing for me New Year's Day was the day I thought right if I don't do it now Mm -hmm. I'll never do it so it was like I'd set myself a New Year's resolution I've just got to get myself out there yeah um I I kind of got it into my head what uh, that I've got nothing to lose Mm -hmm. Um, when I'm applying for exhibitions when I went especially when I went into the uh, textile group I kept thinking I've not been doing this long before I met all the ladies I'm thinking they've been doing a lot longer than me they know a lot more techniques than I do Mm. am I going to stand out like a sore thumb right it wasn't till a friend kind of gave me a bit of a pep talk and said but if you don't do it Amy you're not going to learn Yes, that's right. You're not going to learn by your mistakes. Not everybody's going to like your work. And that's just how it is. And I think Mm -hmm. it was that fear of actually somebody turning around and saying, well, actually, I don't like Amy's work. Yes, and I think that that's a a thread, a a common thread between uh, conversations and between the same thing. It's that it's that fear of rejection, isn't it? It's that fear of asking asking for the asking for the sale, asking for the work. That fear of rejection. So yeah, I can yeah totally understand with that one. But I kind of realised that I could walk around an art gallery. There's one closest to us, and I can turn and say, "Well, I like that one." Yeah. Oh, I don't like that one. So we've not all got the same tastes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so not everybody's going to like me, but it's just getting past that point where, you know, you can't please everybody. Yeah. The, and as long as you've enjoyed doing it, then that's, you know, that's the main thing. 
The the thing about rejection is a friend of mine in France, I, I actually lived in France for a number of years as well, and they have a saying, vous avez déjà un no, you already have a no. Okay, so before you go and ask somebody, you've already got a no because you haven't asked them yet, have you? So they don't know about yes. you. So it's already no. But what can you do to turn that no into a yes? If you don't ask them, it's never going to turn into a yes. Yes. So, you know, it. and I was thinking that's a really good way of thinking it about it. Well, I've already got the no. What can I do now to make it into a yes? And yeah. quite often it does turn into a yes. It, if you don't ask, yes. it's never, it's ever going to be a yes, is it? That's exactly it. So it's it's just to uh, to get in that mindset, I think. And I think it was just perfect timing for me. Like I say, it was New Year's Day mm-hmm. and it was like, right, if, you've got to do it now. <laughs> if not now, then when? I think that's in a song, I, isn't yes. it? Or something like yes. that. <laughs> Brilliant. So there we are, everybody. If you're kind of on the, on, sitting on the fence thinking, oh, I feel a bit scared, et cetera, et cetera, set a date, go for it. It's, yes. It's, 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 it's going to work. It's going to be great. The other thing about whether people like your work or not, my business coach, she always says, it's like offering somebody a plate of biscuits. Okay, so they'll like your biscuits or they won't like your biscuits. They'll take a biscuit or they won't. They might go and prefer somebody else's biscuits. But then just think of it like that in a, almost take the emotion out of it. I'm offering them my plate of biscuits and they'll take them or they won't. But don't get upset about it. You know, do you get upset if you do offer somebody a plate of biscuits? No, I don't want a biscuit, thanks, Amy. No, actually, I don't, no, I prefer prefer a scone. Okay, then, great. Yeah. So let's think about it in the same way. Yeah, exactly. Well, yes. I'm very interested to, towards the end of our chat, hear what your future plans are then, since we, as you say, you're having your best year yet and it isn't finished. Yes. You were talking there about worrying that something's going to go wrong or learning from your mistakes. It is a very important way of how we learn. Do you have any stories to share with us when something didn't quite go as planned and really was a bit of a disaster? And importantly, what did you learn from that experience? And we usually have a bit of a laugh over this. So. <laughs> okay. You might have well, something yeah. to amuse us. <laughs> yeah, we've, I've got a list of long as my whole <laughs> <laughs> Mind, I, I think the most recent disaster I had, which was quite funny, I don't know whether, do you know the textile artist Sue Stone? Yes. Um, yes. I spoke to her a couple of weeks ago and her episode goes live. I think it's next week. So there we Is are. Next yeah. week? Well, yeah. I'm actually doing Sue Stone's online course. Right. Textile artist stuff. Right. Excellent. And it got to one point where we had to stitch by hand a portrait of somebody. Mm. So I thought my son, of course, yeah. you know, you read your yeah. end of day. So I spent a good couple of hours stitching this portrait I thought I was going really really well I ripped all the tissue paper off I said oh look I've done it and it didn't look anything like my son (laughs) at all in fact I didn't recognize the face of the person that I'd stitched (laughs) and I thought maybe maybe it's me but I can be self-critical so I showed it to my mom and she said oh it's the postman (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no it's Ben mom, and she's like looking at it her face said it very the person. oh I love that that's absolutely <laughs> excellent I <laughs> but um I think one of the most comical mistakes which I'm never able live, to live down is when I, I was working one day in the shop and a customer that I know quite well said that she wanted to get into dressmaking and make a skirt. Mm. And I kept saying, well, I've, n- I've never been into dressmaking, never made a skirt at all. So we set ourselves a challenge to make a skirt that with a video tutorial that was on YouTube. Mm. Um, so we both said, we'll go away that night and do the skirt. Well, she come back in the morning. She wasn't wearing her skirt. Um, she'd She'd gone horribly wrong and so had high so we decided in the end they took they we turned them into handbags in the <laughs> <laughs> was, they were that bad hence none of us has attempted to do attempted any to just making just sense. skirts ever since oh, right. <laughs> that's good well yes you, you've learned from that experience don't try making skirts <laughs> they make very good handbags <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i tried it it didn't work you know did you ever show your son then your portrait or did that um, get get reused somewhere else? Well, no, I did. I said to him, I said, who is this? <laughs> and he says, I have no idea. <laughs> 
faces and things are very very difficult anyway when I was when I was chatting to Sue the other week wow you know she's got that down to a real fine art of creating the the image of a face and a person beautifully in yeah a small number of stitches but that is as as with anything that looks so good wow is there a lot of work and experience and trial and error going on in there there is one quite funny thing that she shares with me on her disaster so but I will I will leave that till next week (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> find out find out what happens with Sue. <laughs> okay, I'll look forward to hearing that. <laughs> now then, so moving along from there, we often have those dreaded unfinished objects lurking about in the back of a cupboard somewhere. Do you have any of those? And do you think you will ever finish it? Obviously, you've told me what happened with your skirt. It turned into a handbag. But um, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm quite good at finishing projects off before I move on to the next one I am quite good at that but there is a long-standing one it was a hand embroidery kit that somebody bought me for Christmas Mm. and I just this was just before I started my hand embroidery on the city and guilds and I started it and after about 10 minutes I got really bored (laughs) 10 minutes so I thought yeah yeah (laughs) so I said I put it away about a week later I did do a little bit more but the whole stitching piece is a metre by half a metre. Oh, crikey. So it's huge. That's big, um, isn't so, it, for hand yeah. energy as well. Wow. Yeah, so for about six months, every week, I'd probably get it out for an hour or two. That was about five years ago, the last time <laughs> I got it out. And I actually found it <laughs> at the back of my wardrobe, completely forgot I'd got it. <laughs> it's got, I've still got all the threads with it. And I looked at it and I'm thinking, I won't get rid of it mm. because you never know. Yeah. But at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, no way on earth am I going to finish this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but it now is stuffed back in the wardrobe just in case <laughs> yeah what, what do you think it is about it that you don't like you, you, I don't think you've, you, you just never set off on the right foot with it did you? it's been almost like a punishment oh I better get this it is I think you see I'm quite I'm an impatient crafter mm. I really am and if I can't see things swaying quickly then it I just you know my mind wanders and I'm off on something else yeah yeah. and I think if it had been smaller I think I'd have quite enjoyed it it's the size it it. does sound very overwhelming um yeah size of piece for hand hand embroidery definitely so yeah do you think you might kind of reuse any bits of it maybe or I could do maybe that you know yeah I might I might do if I don't forget that it's in the (laughs) water now we've been talking about plans and you were very definite in your plan this year to take that step out make yourself uh, get out there and kind of start sharing your work and exhibiting and so on so that brings in the thing about planning doesn't it so I'm yes I'm obsessed with plans so there's that saying beware of long distant elephants so it's those items that seem so far away but all of a sudden they are looming large you've got a deadline to meet and uh, what do you do so how do you keep track of your distant elephants how do you manage your time keep yourself organized but also keep that creativity flowing Abby right okay well mine um is you know when you get accepted onto exhibitions Mm, or anything like that I freeze my mind goes blank I think oh my god what am I going to make I don't know what I'm going to stitch I've got no idea Mm. so I'm my own worst enemy but what I have found is I take a lot of photos because my memory if I've got loads of things going on I'm terrible at remembering things right so I take photos of anything that inspires me Mm -hmm. that I might be able to use later on yes um also I sketch pads as well I do a lot of sketch pads but my biggest biggest help is mind maps right uh, yeah uh, so you're the I first use... person who's mentioned mind maps on this thing yeah. I love about... mind maps yeah brilliant. yeah I do I mean when I first met the textile group they got the exhibition coming up and their theme was live the land so I had a mind map of literally everything I could think of that I could do in my thought of lying the land and then it went on to what techniques I could use what materials I use and I kept that it was all on my iPad yeah and it was one of them things when when I once I started panicking I could go back to my map read everything that I've written down yes calm I've got down photos. yeah, yeah calm focus. down I, yeah exactly and then I've got the photos to of the inspiration that I, I, I store every photo so even though 
I'm probably not going to use a photograph for a certain project. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean that I might not use it again. Yes, yes. So even if I do a mind map on a project that I've kind of got halfway through and thought, no, I can't do this now. It's not the time to do this now. I keep everything so I can go back to it. Right. Brilliant. And if I need to change anything, I can do. But the yeah. mind maps, I really do. But I do that with my coursework as well. Mm, yeah. So, they are they are a very very good tool for that capturing that creative thinking i use them if i'm planning out a project or a campaign for somebody this, uh, a friend of mine she's uh, written a, f- a few books we, we've done the same you know same thing create the mind yeah. map with all the sections and ideas because that's an overwhelming task as well as it the, is yeah yeah same idea so yeah so it's interesting so i'm well used to write mind maps and really like them I used to be a mainframe computer programmer a long time ago. So I, I like that kind of logical approach, but it's quite interesting that somebody very creative also yes. finds the structure of the mind maps to help as well. So that's that's really great. Thank you very much. Yeah, for sharing. No, that's fine. That's I yeah. use it every project, every project I use a mind map. It's the only way I can do it and keep calm because the moment I get stressed out, that's when my mind goes blank. Mm, so yeah, if yeah. you know, it just helps me and it really does help. Fantastic. Right. So there you are, everybody. Mind maps. You'll find lots of <laughs> videos on YouTube about mind maps. <laughs> Moving on then, we've been saying that you've had a really great year this year. Um, so moving on to future plans, what sort of plans and projects would you like to share with us today, Abby? Right, okay. So we've got, I've got a few exhibitions coming up next, next year, especially with Midlands Textile Forum, but I yeah. can't reveal venues a secret. Yet, yeah. So <laughs> there, there is a secret. I'm actually setting up an art festival actually in my own town. Mm. so so that'll be quite good hoping for july time but again we're not quite sure on exact dates with that one yeah so i can't uh-huh. give you more yeah information i'm also um hoping to get around the uk to teach more out of town and go to different venues yeah hopefully like places like niche and stitching show and places like that brilliant um so that'll be good it'd be nice to go and visit new places meet new people and which is very exciting a lot more workshops for me in my hometown as well yeah and that's at your studio running them in your it studio? is yeah yes yeah yeah um and then um the quilting rep side of it will be organizing area days which is a great way i've got to find tutor and a speaker in the quilting world <laughs> um <laughs> to come over and have a couple of days with us but yeah there's a lot of exhibitions that i'm doing that i've done this year that i shall be doing again next year um so fingers crossed it will be as busy as this year's been well there's no, there's no reason why not now no. in terms of people keeping up with what you're doing amy what is the best way for people to keep in touch okay well on my website address which is amyjamestextileart.com right that gives you all the courses that i'm doing and the exhibitions and all the work that i have done is actually on there as well right fantastic uh yeah uh you can find me on instagram and facebook under amy james textile artist right well i'll put those links in the show notes so basically for each as as people have seen by now so for each episode you have your own basically like a blog page where I put a summary of what we've been talking about and then links to some of your work and the other links that you want me to share on there so do you have any kind of newsletter you can sign up for anything like that Amy yeah if you go onto my website there's a subscribe box in Brilliant. that but i don't i don't hound you with uh, loads of emails <laughs> but uh, every quarter you'll get an email with the workshop dates on anywhere i'm exhibiting and anything that you need to know but i've got a blog on there as well that's updated weekly good um, very good so, yeah, that's excellent yeah. so you are doing very well I'll, I'll give you a few ticks there for your online marketing efforts <laughs> thank you (laughs) keeping up with your blog weekly that's it can often be quite hard can't it to fit that in I certainly try and do it my blog about podcasting but yes it's difficult to always keep up that schedule but I think again if it's scheduled in it tends to get done doesn't it yes so I'm certainly expanding the Instagram profile for the show as well so that's something I'm starting to develop well, Amy, do you know what? It's been an absolute fantastic pleasure speaking to you. I can't believe Thank how you. quickly it's gone. I say that every week, I know. <laughs> but it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Absolutely fantastic hearing your story. And 
how inspiring I think for people that you haven't been doing this for years and you have just taken the bull by the horns there and said right this is going to be my year the year I actually go out and stop being scared and go for it and look what's happened it's been a marvelous year for you so I think that's a you know a, a very good story for us all to take heart with as well Amy thank you okay so that's it we've gone through your links and everything so that just leads me to say thank you very much amy it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you and i'll be looking out to see what you're doing on instagram and keeping in touch with you as well that'll be fantastic lovely thank you for having me it's been a pleasure thank you if you like this episode and want to hear more then please join the stitch me stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and offers from our lovely guests. Please visit stitcherystories.com to join the fan club. Of course, if you have iTunes, then subscribe there to automatically get new episodes. And why not leave us a review and rating whilst you are there? So that is the end of our Stitchery story for today. So keep stitching, keep smiling and keep creating your very own Stitchery stories.